Hey everyone, it's Sarah from The Dainty Pair. Today we're talking about the breakdown of postpartum recovery. Let's be honest, having a baby isn't the most glamorous thing in the universe. And let me be blunt, neither is the recovery. So basically, when you already feel like you're leaking from every part of your body, and then you have to act like a functioning human being who also takes care of other human beings all while being sleep deprived and sore, if you're not a fan of graphic postpartum glory, then this may not be the right video for you. But if you don't mind, then watch on, brave friend. So there's your disclaimer, because let's be honest, once you've pushed out a human and gone through everything that that entails, um, any dignity pretty much goes out the hospital window. From the moment they check your cervix for the first time to the moment your legs are in the stirrups and you're pushing for the whole world to see. To the times where they push on your stomach and then check your pad to see how much you're bleeding and make sure that everything looks normal. Goodbye privacy. But I will say, I can't think of anything cooler than losing your dignity to pushing out a human being. A human being. A human comes out of your body think of anything cooler than that to lose all sense of privacy too. So here we go mamas, day one of recovery. Pain and bliss. Your boobies might hurt, your undercarriage definitely hurts, especially if you got stitches. The after pains um, of your uterus shrinking down, they kind of hurt. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Day two, pain and bliss. Day three, pain and bliss. Boobs also start swelling. Swelling might not even be the right word. More like. <sighs> Cottage cheese all the way up to your collarbones. The girls are figuring out what to do with the mother load of milk. Day four, crying because you miss being pregnant no matter how miserable it was at times, or all the time. And wondering when the next one is coming. Crying because your older kids look so big. Crying because you miss your doctor and your nurses. Crying because you're overwhelmed. Crying because you're happy. Crying because you're tired. Crying when your husband says the goodnight prayer with the kids. Let's just call this a cry day, shall we? Day five, after pains. Again, that's what they call the pains that happen when your uterus is shrinking back to size after having a baby. And it kind of feels like what early labor feels like. Mine is the baby coming out. Everything down there is just kind of hurting your tummy. And then you realize that you still haven't gone numero dos. That's kind of a scary thought. Because have you heard of hemorrhoids? They're almost worse than childbirth. An exaggeration? Only slightly. Also on day five, have a short cry session for no reason. Boobs start leaking and they become even more painful and lumpy than before. And then you quickly realize that you could feed a small village with all the milk that's managing to fit inside your sore, sore boobs. Day six, more after pain. You shovel chocolate in your mouth like you're on the craziest period of your life. Have a short cry session for no reason. Again, cold flashes, more like full on body shivers, like you're standing in the middle of the snow in January. And hot flashes, more like you're running a marathon in the Sahara Desert in sweatpants. Day seven, every muscle hurts somehow. And you wonder, could I still be sore from labor? Yes, the answer is yes. Boobs hurt, but then you decide, maybe it's time I should go somewhere. Nah. Days eight through 14, depending on what kind of birth you had, you're not supposed to like drive much or lift much. So the sentiment these days is kind of like, get me the freak out of here or I'm gonna go crazy. You might start feeling less sore and kind of get the itch to go be social and see what you've been missing for maybe nine or 10 months. And maybe go find some new food that you won't throw up. Your bleeding may start to lighten. But let me warn you, do not go in public with white pants. Don't do it. Learn from my mistakes. Keep that pad on. Just keep a pad on. Don't be fooled by that tricky light and bleeding. Just keep the pad on, especially if your underwear is white. And just like that, two weeks has come and gone. And despite your worst fears that you might drown in children and never get used to this whole motherhood thing, the craziness starts to feel, well, normal, or at least more normal. And you love these kids more than ever. And then as insane, completely unnatural, and baffling as it may be, you realize I do it all over again. 